All right, what is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the one and only Wrestler Otaku channel. Of course, your personification of excellence on YouTube and YWC and with the best reviews wrestling and your three-time YWC channel of the year, 2021, 2022, 2023. Just thought I'd bring that up since I did that, you know, video yesterday where I gave my, you know, basically ran down my accomplishments here since i've been on youtube but anyway so i'm back here it is officially a friday night it is a friday october 25th of 2024 hope you are having a good one hope you all have a good weekend and all that kind of stuff and i'm just kind of basically chilling out here but anyway i want to make this video because i want to talk about something um just something that happened recently within wwe just a a shall we say a new appearance or a debut that happened recently in wwe of a certain team a pair of individuals who I feel, excuse me, who I feel the need to just kind of talk about here. And uh, so if you guys have been paying attention, I've been fairly active recently, like on social media here on YouTube. And I've been, you know, posting things, doing videos, doing video responses, if you will. Just mainly in regards to the whole discourse, you know, with AEW and WWE and NXT, mostly regarding the ratings and viewership and all that bullshit. And I just, you know, feel the need to put people in their place and educate people. You know, that's just kind of what I do on here. So, it is what it is on that. I just, you know, that's just how I am. You know, when I see something, when I see BS, I just have to call it like it is. I just have to call it call it out. It's just how I am. And that's what I do on here. So, so if you see me doing that, that's basically what that is. But anyway, I want to go ahead and talk about this real quick because, and I also want to just make the statement because, you know, people come on here, you know, they'll say things about me like, oh, I'm this big WWE hater or, I th you know, I've said, oh, WWE is shit, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the thing. I have had, obviously, criticisms of WWE, you know, for years now. You know, this is obviously not a secret. You know, it's no big secret. I'll even come on here and say it myself. I've had major criticisms of the company over the years, mostly dating back to, you know, when Vince McMahon was there. But um, the thing about it is, like, I'm not this big, you know, hater. You know, I don't come on here and just... See, I don't do what these people do where, you know, they just hate watch AEW. I don't sit up here and hate watch a wrestling promotion. I don't hate watch. You know, I don't really consider myself a hate watcher of anything. I'll just call it, if I'm give if somebody asks me my opinion, I'll tell it like it is. But I don't sit here and just 24-7 just hate on something that, you know, I don't like. Or, you know, talk about something that I just don't like or don't care for. You know, that's just not what I do, you know. Um, but uh, it's like... To anybody who seems to think that I've, you know, said, oh, WWE shit, blah, blah, blah. Like, there are elements of WWE that I'm not necessarily particularly fond of or whatever case may be. But I wouldn't say necessarily that they're shit. You know, at least not right now. And I'll just go, and I'll say this. And this is something that I can do that not, not too many of these other people out here, these other content creators and such can do. And I'll give WWE a bit of credit, you know. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give them a, a load of credit. You know, they have improved, if anything, they've improved in quality in the last year or so. You know, I mean, it's kind of hard to not improve, you know, from the from a Vince McMahon WWE, you know, from a Vince McMahon creatively led WWE. It's hard not to improve from that now that he's no longer there. Their quality has improved exponentially since Vince McMahon got ousted, since being taken over by TKO, you know, since Triple H took over. It's, it's, it's improved quite a bit, you know, so I'll give credit where credit is due. And that's one, one of the things that I can do that not many of these other people can do. I can give credit when it's warranted. And uh, it's just the, the thing about me is, yes, they've improved and yes, they've gotten better quality-wise. But they're not, oh my God, this is so great and this is so much better than anything going on in AW or anywhere else. I'm just not at that level, you know. I think they've, they've improved, you know. I think they're doing good stuff. And I'll be, again, I'll gladly... When I if if they're doing something good, I'll say, hey, I think this is pretty good. But these people overdo it. These people overgloss it. Not like it's the best best thing ever when it's not. <laughs> it's just just being honest, you know. I'm just being honest. And I try and be one thing about me that you guys you know need to understand is I try and be as fair and as honest and as as objective as I can be. I know wrestling is by nature a subjective matter. And, you know, I give my real opinions and my real thoughts when I do these videos. But for the most part, you know, I try to stay fair and, and objective when I, you know, watch these shows, when I do these, when I do these videos, these reviews and such. But, uh, but yeah, so 
So I don't think necessarily WWE is bad. I don't think they're shit or anything like that. Like people seem to claim that I'm that that's what I'm saying. I just think they're not as good as everybody's, you know, making it out to be. That's just that's just kind of my where I'm coming from. But um, but on that note, one of the things that WWE is doing right now, one of the things that has happened recently that has kind of gotten my interest when it comes to WWE is the arrival of a tag team, a longtime tag team that has recently uh, arrived and has gotten signed by WWE. This was reported like weeks, months ago. And that is the arrival of Chris Saban, Alex Shelley, that being the team of the Motor City Machine Guns. Now, if you don't know, the Motor City Machine Guns are one of my favorite all-time tag teams. One of my favorite tag teams of all time in all for wrestling. You know, they're definitely top 10, top 15. I mean, I got a, I got a number of favorite tag teams. You know, I've been watching wrestling a long time, so I got a number of favorite tag teams. Motor City Machine Guns are up there, you know, from the days in TNA. Then they were in Ring of Honor for a time. I believe they were in New Japan for a time. They've been, they've, they've made the rounds. They've gone around. They've been around. So, trust me, they've been around a long time. And, you know, seeing their matches, seeing what they did in the past in the TNA Impact Wrestling days, seeing what they did in Ring of Honor, you know, in their time in Ring of Honor, watching their matches over the years, they've become one of my favorite tag teams of all time. And they're still, they still are to this day. And they're still killing it in everything that they're doing, no matter what company they're performing. And now finally they've, you know, um, you know, arrived, if you will, in WWE. When, you know, initially it was said that they were going to AEW and I was excited about that. But then it was announced later that they were going to WWE and I was thinking to myself, well, I, you know, again, <laughs> I kind of had hesitations, but I was like, let's see how it goes. You know, try to keep an open mind. Let's see how it goes. Right. So they've been promoting them for weeks and weeks, you know, dating back to like, what, three, four weeks ago. And then they officially made their debut last week and they were brought on the show. They had a segment backstage, apparently. And again, I... Went and checked this out on their YouTube page. And they had their first match, first official match since joining WWE, since being signed. So their official debut match was last week. They competed in a three-way or triple threat tag team match, which they ended up winning, obviously. And they defeated, um, I forget what team they faced. I think it was like uh, the team with Grayson Waller and uh, Austin Theory. And then the team of, I believe it was Humberto Carrillo and... Um, who was the other guy? Angel Garza. I think that's who they beat. Um, but yeah, so they won a, th a triple threat tag team match with, of course, the winner of that match going on to face the winner of another triple threat tag match that happened on the same show last week. And that would be a basically a number one contenders match. So then here tonight on SmackDown, the Motor City Machine Guns faced off against DIY, that being, uh, of course, the team of uh, uh, Tommaso Ciampa and um, Johnny Gargano in a number one contenders match. And they won said match. Which, of course, made them a, the number one contenders, and they will go on to face, of course, the current WWE Tag Team Champions, that being the Bloodlines, uh, Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa. So they basically won their match, they became the number one contenders, and then, apparently, they had the title match, their title match, here tonight on the same show. So they wrestled number one contenders a match, they won it, and then later on in the show, they challenged for the WWE Tag Team Championships against the Bloodline. And, lo and behold... And there was some apparently some tomfoolery in that match at the end. You had a bunch of interference from the other members of the bloodline. Then you had, you know, you had Jimmy, apparently Jim Uso came out. You had Jay Uso come out later. Roman Reigns. You had the whole, you know, there was a whole bunch of interference at the end, you know, at the outset of that match, so on and so forth. So you had a bunch of, you know, shenanigans at the end. But as a result, um, the Motor City Machine Guns took advantage. They defeated the bloodline. And the Motor City Machine Guns are now the new WWE World Tag Team Champions in just the third match since debuting with the companies. In their third match in WWE, they are now the WWE Tag Team Champions. And when I got when I caught wind of that, and then I went back and I watched, you know, both the number one contenders match and then later the the the, the tag match they had, I was like, whoa, you know. And, and part of me like. Obviously, initially, I was, like, happy because now they're finally, you know, getting recognition from every, anybody else who maybe didn't know who they were. You know, that we're seeing you're, everybody is seeing just how good of a team they were. Everybody's seeing, you know, why I consider them one of my favorite all-time tag teams. They're finally getting the rub, if you will. They're finally getting recognition. So, on one hand, I was happy. I was elated in the fact that they're WWE Tag Champions. But on the other hand, I kind of have the reservation, like... You know, now that they're the champions, you know, in just, again, the third match, they literally just debuted last week, and now they're already the tag champions. I'm kind of thinking to myself, 
where do they go from here? Or specifically, how will WWE book them from here? Because WWE in the past, they've had a track record of putting titles on guys who literally just debut with the company and then they end up not really doing anything going forward or their 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 reign kind of falls short or you know in, in a sense they don't really book them right and they end up basically tanking or you know tanking pretty quickly so and this has happened you know I'm not saying it happens every time but it has happened in the past okay one example that comes to mind Carlito Carlito when he debuted in 2004 on SmackDown Faced John Cena that night, beat John Cena, albeit thanks to, you know, he used basically, you know, Cena's chain or whatever. But he beat, he defeated John Cena on his first night in his debut match, won the United States title, and then after that didn't really do shit, and then lost the title back to John Cena like a month later. And, it, you know, there was some, a bunch of BS in between, but it was like the first SmackDown after Survivor Series that year in November. And then, you know, Carlito, you know, he, he had his henchman, I forget what the dude's name, Jesus, I think, and, you know, that that whole bullshit, and then John Cena just won the title right back after a month, and Carlito basically looked like a punk, pretty much, and so that kind of fell flat, and Carlito, you know, like, he ended up having a fruitful career afterwards, but I'm just saying, you know, that's kind of what WWE does, or that's, you know, what they've done in the past, now, again, I, I, I'm kind of, again, this is why I'm on the fence, because I don't really know how this WWE, you know, the TKO, Triple H-led WWE, is going to go forward, and that's kind of why I'm like, I'll keep an open mind about it, I'm happy that they won the titles, I'm happy they're getting the rub and the recognition, but where do they go from here, how will they book the Motor City Machine Guns from here, going forward, you know, they should book them the right way, they should book them as a strong, legitimate tag team, going forward, now that they've basically won it on like, again, within a week, like within their third match, but I don't know, you know, we don't know yet, only time will tell. So yeah, I'm kind of that's kind of where I am right now with that. I'm glad they're I'm glad they're champions. Don't get me wrong, I am glad that they're champions. But will they be booked right? That is the question. Or are they gonna? Or is this just gonna be like a one week? Well, I doubt it's one week, but one month or you know one time thing, and they're just gonna have them drop the titles right back to the bloodline because I can see them doing that. I can very well see them doing that. I mean, the bloodline, you know, they got this big bloodline civil war and all this other kind of stuff. And the, they've been put, they've been pushing this bloodline storyline for years. They're obviously the, the, the top, you know, top faction, top story, however you want to put that. So I could see them putting the titles right back on the bloodline right after this. And honestly, if they did, that would be an incredible disappointment. You know, just considering, you know, Motor City Machine Guns, you should not be taking the titles off of them or not making them look weak anytime soon. So that's just kind of where I am. You know, I have my reservations. I'm happy they're champions, but we'll see where they go from here. So that's where I'm that's where I'm at. But yeah, so so we'll see how the Motor City Machine Guns, Chris Saban, and Alex Shelley do in WWE going forward. So so yeah, that but that's one one of the things that I am interested in when it comes to WWE, when it comes to a talent or a team in this case, in WWE, you know, in terms of active wrestlers, in terms of what, you know, an active champion. So, yeah, just thought I'd get my thoughts on that real quickly now that I'm thinking about it. I meant to do this, I meant to do this before. Like, I meant to talk about this before because I know, you know, they debuted Motor City Machine Guns last week. But now here that they're champions, I figured I'd go ahead and make a video about it and talk about it now. But anyway, that's pretty much all I wanted to say for that. So, you know... Chris Saban, Alex Shelley, you know, they get the rub, and the two matches, or the three matches that they had, they look pretty damn good, they haven't, they haven't missed a beat, you know, even year, years later, you know, they've, they've been wrestling as a team for going on almost 20 years, you know, Chris Saban, dating back to his days in TNA, he's been, he was in TNA back, way, way back when TNA first started, so yeah, this guy's been doing it for a long time, and they have not missed a beat, man, so, so they have some, couple quality matches, you know, in their first couple of uh, uh, outgoings in WWE. So, again, we'll see where that goes. But anyway, that's pretty much all I got to say for that. So, thank you for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. Leave a comment. Give me your thoughts on anything I talked about here. And be sure to subscribe to the channel, man, if you haven't already. Appreciate all the support I can get. And with that being said, it's pretty much going to do it, man. So, thank you for watching once more. Till next time, Russell Taku. See you guys later. I'm out. Peace.